everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to some more wrestling predictions the first wrestling predictions we've had and we've got to do since wrestlemania xl wrestlemania 40 whatever the fuck we're calling it we're, we're back and this time we're in we're in Barry. how many people are actually saying that oh no wait it's not parry is it it's um it's not in, in lille it's not in Paris, but it's in Viva la France. Uh, we're over. We're literally over the, the over a bit of water from where I live. Uh, but yes, we're back with Backlash. Just some great, great matches. There is only five to predict as it stands. We've still got uh, part two of the draft happening. There's still another more, uh, Monday Night Raw and a Friday Night Smackdown. But I'm getting it early, done on the weekend, so I can smash the weekend uh, off with work and whatnot. And I've got a night out with the boys who's at work on the weekend. Um, and then we're going to have to try and fit in watching that because I think it kicks off at half five in the United Kingdom for us Britonians. Very much looking forward to this. Um Obviously going to be some storylines to develop and come through this pay-per-view. Oh, sorry, this PLE. Uh, see where we go with different views and different title holders and different storylines and whatnot. It's always a good look to... um to look at the landscape uh, in the first uh, PLE after WrestleMania of, of where we're going, what stories we're building to, any shenanigan endings to stuff, any betrayals, any comebacks, any anything that's going to go down. It's always a great way to see how we're going to look going forward in the future. Uh, so I can't wait. It should be a fun show. But anyway, let's predict uh, the matches. <laughs> what we're fucking here for let's let's do the wrestling predictions on the wrestling prediction video fucking is it a bolton fan no i can't there's some guy who's getting interviewed out of a football game he's like oh what do you think's gonna happen today he goes well i think it's either gonna be a win draw or a loss today and it's like yep yeah, yeah, well done you've predicted every outcome there could be in a footy match that's us we're just we're gonna predict wrestling's on the wrestling prediction video what a fucking idiot yes five matches to predict so here we go with my predictions off with uh, jade cargill and bianca Belair taking on um the kabuki warriors for the women's tag team championships this is a funny old one. I don't know how much time Damage Control have left. I like Damage Control. I definitely think Damage Control was a lot better with Bailey involved and stuff. But obviously, we know what's happened there. Um, I don't know which way it's going to go. I, Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair are fucking phenomenal and fantastic and amazing. And I absolutely adore both of them. And Bianca Belair mostly because that's my fucking girl right there. Uh, I, I do really like Kabuki Warriors. I see more of a story going forward with this Bianca and Jade Cargill. This proper absolute two powerhouses these two huge units um massive superstars going forward and taking these women titles and hopefully development and ele uh, developing them and elevating them even further i see more going forward with them too so i'm going to say we're going to have new women's tag team champions and it will be jade cargill and bianca Belair. tonga and solo sokoa are going up against randy orton and kevin owens in a in a very strange, weird one. It, is anybody else like this, right? Does anybody leave WrestleMania or XL and then we had a couple of weeks, whatever, pass? And then the whole Bloodline stuff sort of leaves a bit of a sour taste in your mouth. Like, it doesn't feel as... Not credible, but as imposing, as dominant, as like, oh my god, it's the bloodline, because you're thinking Roman, you're thinking everybody's solo, and, and Jimmy and whatnot, and obviously Jimmy's been attacked, and fuck knows what he's doing at the minute and stuff. Um... <laughs> It's, it's left away. I mean, Tamatonga is a great introduction. Absolutely fantastic. Amazing. Solo being the sort of face of the bloodline at the minute. You know, giving Paul Heyman a bit of crap. Calling the decisions. Calling the shots. Bringing in new people. It's a weird one. It's a strange one. And I don't know... I don't know how much stock they're going to put into this. Does this mean that, that Solo's going to rise so far up, Roman's going to come up and be like, hang on a sec. Know your place. You're still below me. Whatever. And then we're going to have a few going on there. I don't know. I, I just can't see this new pairing. Oh, but they're, you, we're not going to give Solo and uh, Tamatonga a dub, an L, sorry, this early on in this new sort of weird bloodline structure we got going. I don't know. No, right. My initial gut instinct was Randy Orton and Kevin Owens picking up the win. That was my initial one. And yeah, it was my gut instinct. I'm going to stick with it. Randy Orton and Kevin Owens picking up the win. But I really haven't got a fucking clue on this one. It's Tiffany Stratton and Naomi going up against Bailey to try and take her WWE Women's Championship offer in a triple threat match, which should be amazing. Tiffany's come up to the main roster and been absolutely flawless. Uh, the return of Naomi's been fucking great and amazing. I love Naomi. And Bailey is, is, is already, even though we haven't had a, a title defense yet and we've only had her as champion for a few weeks, she looks apart. She is the part. She looks phenomenal. Um, but because it is only a few weeks in, I can't see that title going anywhere. I don't know, and I've heard other, but you know, the big proper wrestling YouTubers, the Zanti Saps of that other world. I don't think transitional champions um, are, are going to be what they used to be. I don't think we're going to have not calling Bailey a transitional champion, but like, I don't think we're going to have these short title reigns anymore. I think we'll have at least a good four to 
four to six months of, of, of a solid, decent enough rain, and then we'll start passing it. I mean, I could be wrong on that. Like I said, it's just sort of ideas I've heard and picked up and whatnot, and it, it all makes sense to me. And Bailey isn't going to come out of uh, Viva La France uh, without her title. So Bailey is winning this one. Priest against Jey Uso. And now, even though going off what I've just said about transitional champions, I think people have their title reigns and whatnot uh, a bit long. This one still gives me a couple of question marks. I will, and I am more inclined to say Damian Priest because I can't see him holding that World Heavyweight Championship for, for what is it? But what's it been like? For four weeks, five weeks, maybe however long it's been. I can't see him dropping every time soon. But they are putting an awful lot of stock into Jey Uso. And I, I but personally believe rightfully so i love joe so i think he's great he was the the number one pick in the monday night raw well sorry for the smackdown night one of the draft uh he was the first pick for raw wasn't he over people like seth rollins and stuff and i i can they're definitely going to put a lot of stock into him he's going to lose this match it's not going to be clean there will be shenanigans whether it be um the rest of uh yeah you know dominic or um fucking what's his face whether it's the rest of the judgment day that coming down or finn balor um <sighs> It's just a weird one how the, Raw made it clear that Jey Uso, number one, that's our guy. He will hold this title in at some point, maybe maybe more towards SummerSlam or some shit. I, I, feel, I feel like at a bigger show he'll get it. But it is still just leaving me... I, I really just want to say, all right, pretty start on the next, but it's just something like that whole first pick. There's going to be a lot of stock put into him. Mmm. No, we're still, yeah, yeah Priest isn't going to lose it, just like Bailey. We're not going to have a small little couple of weeks having the championship and away we go. He's going to keep it for a while. He will win, but it will be by shenanigans. Damon Priest retains. It's Cody Rhodes taking on AJ Styles for WWE, undisputed, fucking universal, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's too long. Just the WWE Championship. It's too fucking long for me to say all this shit. Uh, but yeah, Cody Rhodes in his first title defense. Um, no, wait, was this, was it um on Monday night? Uh, sorry, SmackDown against... um. Thingy. That wasn't for the title, was it? I can't remember now. It's only been like three days since I watched it. Anyway, his first uh, PLE title defense, we'll say, um, against a phenomenal opponent, quite literally, uh, in AJ Styles, with this new attitude, this new look, this new persona, well, newish look, new uh, entrance and whatnot. But we already know straight away, Cody Rhodes isn't losing this for some time. Uh, yes, it might be a close match. There might be a few like, oh my God, Jesus Christ, you know, uh, phenomenal forearm and all this kind of stuff. He, you know, his styles clashes, but he's done everything to him. Oh, he's just kicked. It's going to be very close. It's going to be very, very tight. But Cody Rhodes is not leaving without that championship. So it's an easy one. Cody Rhodes retaining. There we go, visuals. That is my predictions uh, for this week's, well, for the, sorry, no, for this. Well, it's coming up. I'm not sure when I'm going to upload this, but the next PLE, WWE Backlash in a See how it plans out. Like I said, the landscape of WWE slowly changing and whatnot in these new feuds coming out. Maybe this, that, and that happens there. And she's coming here. And he's, we're going to see what we're going to do uh, going forward. Plus, I love that they're doing all these PLEs on like world tour events. Obviously, Clash of the Castle coming to Britain soon, which I will not be going to. Not because I don't want to, but I'm a broke ass bitch. I ain't afforded some of the ticket prices that I've seen. But I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. This world tour they're doing with PLEs. Uh, the next big, 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 big one is, of course, will be. Summer of Slam. Oh no, is it Money in the Bank? Obviously, there's more in between, I like Clash of the Castle, but is Summer Slam the next big, big one? Or is it Money? Either way, I can't wait to see how we go in this new era of WWE and stuff, and new champions and new contenders and NXT call ups and all this kind of stuff. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. Let me know your predictions in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Who you've got to win, who you've got to lose. Anything that you want, let me know, and uh, we, will, uh, we will watch this. I'm going to have to drag the boys on the night out to get to a pub to be like, We'll go to this pub because the wrestling's on. We're going to watch it for a few hours and we'll go to another pub or wherever we're going. That's hopefully going to be the plan. But anyway, visuals, more importantly, thank you so much for watching. You guys are literally the fucking best. Memorials keep being you. Eggy bone, eggy bone.